students and parents and faculty of Green Meadow Waldorf School, seventh and eighth grade, is extremely excited to have you here today. They have been working for many weeks with Ms. Hawley and Ms. Tallman on preparing this entertaining show for you. There are still more performances to come, three more. Tomorrow at 1.25, we will be presenting for the high school and anyone else who wishes to come. We will also have two evening performances at 7 p.m. We hope that you will bring your family and friends to our evening performances at 7 p.m. tonight and tomorrow. There will also be a brief intermission in the middle of the show, during which time our actors and actresses will be changing very quickly backstage. During this time, we ask that you just stay seated and remain relatively quiet while you wait for the show to resume. The house lights will go up then so you'll know, and teachers, if there are bathroom needs, that would be a good time. Okay. You'll have about four to five minutes. Yeah. And now, without further ado, on behalf of the seventh and eighth grade, I invite you to climb aboard our pirate ship with us and embark on a voyage to the shores of England about a hundred years ago as we present to you the Pirates of Penzance. Today, I am out of my indentures, and today, I leave you forever. But this is quite unaccountable. A keener hand at scuttling a canarder or cutting out the P&O never shipped a handspike. Yes, I did my best for you, and why? It was my duty under my indentures, and I am a slave of duty. As a child, I was regularly apprenticed to your band. It was through an error, no matter. The mistake was ours, not yours. And I, was, and I was in honor bound by it. An error? What error? I may not tell you, for it reflects upon my well-loved root. Nay, dear master, my mind has long been gnawed by the cankering tooth of mystery. And you have a doubt at once. <laughs> to take and buy this promising boy apprentice to a 
devote myself heart and soul to your extermination. Poor lad! Poor lad! Well, Frederick, if you conscientiously feel that it is your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. I know why, but I mustn't tell you it wouldn't be right. Why not, my boy? It's only half past 11, and you are one of us till the clock strikes 12. Then it is my duty to tell you that you are too tender-hearted. For example, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourself. But when you attack a stronger one, you invariably get thrashed. There is some truth in that. <laughs> then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. Of course, we are orphans ourselves, and know what it is. Yes, but it has gotten about, and what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. The last three ships proved to be manned entirely by orphans, and so we had to let them go. One would think that Great Britain's whole mercantile navy was recruited solely from her orphan asylum, which we know is not the case. But hang it all, you wouldn't have us absolutely merciless. That's my difficulty. Until 12 o'clock I would. After 12 I wouldn't. Oh, was ever a man placed in such a delicate situation? And Ruth, your own Ruth, whom you love so well, and who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart, what is to become of her? Oh, he will take you with him. Uh, uh, Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It's, it's true I admire you very much, as you know, but I have been at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I've seen in that time. I think it is a sweet face. It is, oh, it is! <laughs> I say I think it is, that is my impression. But as I have never ha had the opportunity of comparing you with other women, it's possible I, I may just be mistaken. True? <laughs> what a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person and find out she is on the whole plane. Oh, Ruth is very, well, very well, indeed. <laughs> yes, there are the of a fine woman about Ruth. Do you really think so? I do. <laughs> then I will not be so selfish as to take her from you. In justice to her and in consideration for you, sir, I will leave her behind. No, 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 no. Frederick, this must not be. We are rough men who lead a rough life. And we are not so utterly heartless to deprive thee of thy love. I think I am right in saying that there is not one here who would rob thee of this inestimable treasure for no. all the world holds dear. Not one. No, I thought there wasn't. Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love. You are very good, I'm sure. 
Well, it's the top of the tide, and we must be off. Farewell, Frederick, and when your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will, for the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. No, Frederick, it cannot be. I do not think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick, I shall live and die a pirate king. usually look for a wife of 17. A wife of 17? You will find me a wife of a thousand. No, but I shall find you a wife of 47, and that is quite enough. Ruth, tell me candidly and without reserve. Compared with other women, how are you? I will answer you truthfully, Master. I have a slight cold, but otherwise I am quite well. I'm sorry for your cold, but I was referring rather to your personal appearance. With compared with other women, are you beautiful? I have been told so, dear master. But lately? Oh no, years and years ago. <laughs> what do you think of yourself? That is a delicate question to answer, but I think I am a fine woman. And that is your candid opinion? Yes, I should be deceiving you if I told you otherwise. Thank you, Ruth. I believe you, for I know you would not practice in my inexperience. And if, I say if, you are really a fine woman. Your age shall be no obstacle to our union. Climbing over rocky Hark! mountains. Surely I hear voices. Who has ventured to approach our all but inaccessible lair? Could it be Custom House? No, it does not sound like Custom House. Confusion! It is the voices of young girls. If he should see them, I am lost. <laughs> How lovely! A bevy of beautiful young maidens! Lost! How surpassingly lovely is the plainest of them. What grace, what delicacy, what refinement. And Ruth, Ruth told me she was beautiful. Oh, false one, you have deceived me. I deceived you. Yes, deceived me. You told me you were fair as gold. Upon my innocence you play. Thank you. 
what shall I do before these gentle maidens I dare not show in this alarming costume? No, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothing. Country. But how thoroughly delightful! 
painful it is to be so entirely alone. <laughs> Why, in all probability, we are the first human beings who ever set foot on this spot. <laughs> for mermaids, this is the very place for mermaids. <laughs> who are only human beings down to the waist, and who can't be said strictly to set foot anywhere. Tails oh, they may, but feet they cannot. <laughs> Quite alone, and the sea is smooth as glass. Yes. Suppose we take off our shoes <laughs> and stop <laughs> not to intrude myself upon your notice in this effective but alarming costume. But under these particular circumstances, it is my bounden duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, sir? Speak. I am a pirate. <laughs> Shun me. This evening I renounce my vile profession, and to that end, O oh pure and peerless maiden, O oh blushing buds of ever blooming beauty, I soar at heart, I soar at heart, implore your kind assistance.
is meant to will anon be here. you get you hence, young ladies, while the coast is clear. Sons-in-law. 
Well, we object to Major General as fathers-in-law. <laughs> but we waive that point. <laughs> we do not press it. We look over it. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> huh, an idea. And do you mean you would deliberately rob me of these sole remaining props of my old age and leave me to go through the remainder of my life unfriended, unprotected, and alone? Well, yes, that's the idea. Tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, that's it all! And here we are again! <laughs> Of our band, 
We do elect you. property a year ago. The stucco in your baronial hall is scarcely dry. Frederick, within the chapel are ancestors. <laughs> not deny that. With the estate, I bought the chapel and its contents. I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are, and I shudder to think that they're descended by purchase, if I may so describe myself. <laughs> I have brought dishonor upon what I have no doubt was an unstained family of stucco. <laughs> Frederick, at what time does your expedition, mar expedition march against these scoundrels? At 11, and before midnight I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with this pestilent scourge by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only await my orders. Then, Frederick, let your escort lie in hearty. Be summoned to receive a general's blessing Ere they depart upon their dread adventure Here's they come
February, 28 days as a rule are plenty, one year and every four, his days shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if it were owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. You are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born in leap year on the 29th of February. And so, by a simple arithmetical process, you will easily discover that although you've lived 21 years, yet if we go by birthdays, you're only five. <laughs> and a little bit over. <laughs> Though counting in the usual way, years 21, I've been alive. Yet reckoning by my natal day, yet reckoning by my natal day, I am a little boy of five years, a little boy of five. <laughs>
word. This is most curious, most absurdly whimsical. Five and a quarter. No one would think it to look at me. You're glad now I'll be bound that you spared us. You would have never forgiven yourself when you had discovered you had killed two of your comrades. <laughs> but my comrades? I'm afraid you don't appreciate the delicacy of your position. You were apprenticed until my 21st oh. year. No, until you reached your 21st birthday. And going by birthdays, <laughs> you're only five and a quarter. <laughs> you don't mean to say you were going to hold me to this. No, we merely remind you of the fact and leave the rest up to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty. Oh, don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist upon the letter of your bond, just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We content ourselves with pointing out to you your sense of duty. Your duty. Well, you've appealed to my sense of duty. My duty is only too clear. I abhor your infamous calling and shudder at the thought that I was ever mixed up with it. But at any price, I must do my duty. Bravely spoken. Come, you're one of us once more. Lead on, I follow. A oh, horror. What is what the matter? matter? Ought, to ought I to tell you? No, I cannot. <coughs> and yet, as one of your band, speak out. I charge you by that sense of conscientiousness to which we have never yet appealed in vain. Well, General Stanley, the father of my Mabel. Yes, yes. Who it breaks my heart to betray the honored father of the girl at door. Break, break it. <laughs> General Stanley. Yes, yes. You he escaped from you on the plea he was an orphan. He did! Oh. Right. I was there. <laughs> well. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay, okay. General Stanley escaped from you, but he, he is no orphan. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I to understand that to save his contemptible life, he dared practice on our credulous simplicity? <laughs> our revenge shall be swift and terrible. We will go and collect our band and attack the Tremorden Castle this very night. What stay? Not a word. He is due. <laughs> away, away, my heart's on fire. I burn this day's deception to repay. This very night, my vengeance star shall collect in something more. Away, away. Away, away, ere I expire, I find my duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with vengeance fire, it strikes me to the core. Away, away.
I am a shall be. I'll then return and claim you. I declare it. It seems so long. Swear that till then you will be true to me. Yes, I will be strong. My honest Stanley's dead and gone. I swear it.